Hey guys and welcome back to the Magical Box tutorial. In this one we'll be taking a look at Fog in conjunction with an additional use of the Mandible Shader to help create scenes like this foggy lighthouse. Okay, so I will have a link in the description for you guys to download this um, scene here so you guys can work um, in tandem with this video. After you guys have done downloading that, you can go ahead and go to Render, go to the Sun, select Fog, and go ahead and turn it up. Let me turn off Bloom, because the Bloom is usually turned off by default. You can tell there's a difference in what Fog does to light. When you turn on Fog, it creates more of a emissive type of shadering and in conjunction with blue it makes it look really cool especially if you have aspect on in this case because the lighthouse shoots light we can add even more effects by creating new objects and using the mandible shader go ahead and create a new object and make this quite large Go ahead and go to Shader and select Mandible. And then go ahead and just drag this down so that only the top part is touching the ground. And you can just duplicate this multiple times. And using the plus and minus keys on your keyboard, you can rotate it or go over here and rotate it that way. But I like the hotkeys. And just give it variation. Don't want it too similar. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go to render, take a look at what it looks like. It looks like a mess right now because we don't have this set as a cloud shader. Go ahead and just right click, I mean alt, left click the clouds. Go to matter, select cloud, second option, increase the density. And it's hard to tell what it looks like right now. You want to have these enabled. Now with these enabled, it makes it look much more realistic as a foggy scene, but also you can see it takes a very long time to render. Um, for instance, let's say if you have sparse off, sometimes your objects could be cropped. So for instance, if I create, let's say, a duplicate of this lighthouse, and I drag it here with sparse, well, that's not far enough, I guess. With sparse unenabled, you won't be able to see that object because it's too far. That's trying to save rendering times. But if you have it on, it increases rendering times, but also allows you to put objects farther away from your scene. So that's very convenient to know. I'm going to have it. Um, I'm going to have it disabled for now because all my objects seem to um, show up in my scene. And literally now it's all about playing with the clouds and the values here. Let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and select one of the objects. And um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and select the object go into the orthogonal view, get a side view of this, and using this line as the ground, let's go ahead and delete, I actually can't even see the line anymore, but let's go ahead and delete the excess, and then constrict it so that it's easier to work with, and we're just going to do this with all the objects. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and put this all into one group. 
So let's go ahead and select all of them. Select everything except for the lighthouse. There we go. And then hit Control R. Now you have that as one group, which you can move up and down if you want. Um, in the group, we can go ahead and select one of the objects and just go into voxel mode, increase the size, make sure you're on 3D, circle, and just erase parts here and there. Just to give it a little more variation, since we did duplicate this like 10 or so times. And the size of your, um, the size at which you delete depends on how large your object will be. Okay, that looks good. Maybe go into the whole group. Just drag it down a little bit. And then maybe I want to duplicate some more. Okay, that looks cool. Be sure you save it. And then, um, you can see with fog enabled, as well as all your other stuff, rendering becomes very slow. So, we could, in theory, maybe just turn the cloud and the MISGDX just to see what the color would be. Right now it's gray, I like, maybe you want to make it more lighter than that. Like that. Give it a little bit of color. And then maybe mess with these settings a little bit. Okay, I want it the other way. mess with the exposure yeah you could see I think some of the clouds are not being rendered because the sparse mode is off if I turn that on I should be able to see more clouds and if not I can just over to add some more so it looks like I'm missing some clouds here so I want to add some clouds right there and then there's some missing like in the front area. Add some there. And maybe select a more suitable view. Ah, uh, you see, there's a cloud here. That's missing. Gonna up the fog higher and then change the intensity of this not to white. Okay, I think that will look good. So I'll just wait for this to render and we'll see what the outcome will be.
Okay, and there you have it. You have the scene that has been altered with fog and a very smart use of the Mandible shader can create realistic looking fog effects in Magic the Box. So let's say you want to save your work. Not save your work, if you want to save this picture, do not go over here and click on render. This will nullify all the um, all the options you set here and the bloom would be significantly lowered. If you want to save it, you need to have this fully render and click on this camera icon right here, which will open a new window and allow you to save it as a PNG. And let's say you want to make, so right now it looks very grainy. If you want to up the resolution, you can always go here and select the proper resolution and the amount of sampling you want it to be. By default, it's 1024, but I could set it to 248 if I wanted to. And keep in mind, this loading time will vary depending on your GPU. I have a 1080 Ti and it still takes a while so this speed the time it takes you to render a photo at higher resolutions will vary but other than that um, that's all you need to know for fog and magical voxel see you in the next video